Welcome to another home studio attempt at making a print. This is going to use Adobe Illustrator and we're also going to try Photoshop as a way of creating a design and applying it that would mimic what we'd normally do in the letterpress studio at Austin P. I have chosen a eight and a half by 11 art board in Illustrator. Uh, I'm changing my document setup to inches and putting rulers on just so you have a sense that this is eight and a half by 11 because that's what I'm going to print, so I might as well make the artboard the same size as what my normal home printer will use. I've selected the type tool. Type, if you saw the wood type letterpress video, you know that that was the word that I was doing there. So this is just the home studio version facsimile. You can see there's a type menu you can get there from either the side menu or from the top menu and window. And I'm trying to mimic what I did in the studio, which was to have a 20 line typeface that says pile. I'm choosing Gil Sands for a couple of reasons, which I'll go into in a second. But the 240 point is because a line in wood type is 12 points. So 20 points times 12 is 240. And then the other one was 12 lines. So that's 12 times 12, which would be 144. Now, in order to manipulate these, I have to turn them into outlines because as they are, they want to stay together as a line of type. I can do that with either right clicking or I can go into the type menu and click create outlines. But once I do that, they are still in a group. So I have to ungroup them, which I can also do by right clicking. And now each of these letter forms are individual. So you can see when I select them, they are individual and I'm deleting the ones I don't wanna use. If you wanna know why I'm picking the ones I picked, go and watch the wood type video. I go into that design process more there. You can see that if you hover over the corner, you get this little curved arrow that allows you to manipulate and rotate your letter forms. And using the move tool or the black arrow you can move all these components around you can also select all of them as a group use the white arrow it does something different so just use the black arrow and that looks pretty good so i'm going to go ahead and print it make sure you have the right printer there's a print so this is what we would do if we we're going to use photoshop i know some of you prefer one or the other you have to select an artboard under print because we're looking for print and that'll give you an appropriate preset at the right resolution and size of the canvas there's another type tool it's a little bit different because photoshop is a raster graphic program and it is already defaulted to the 240 that i had before notice that the spacing of the letters is a little bit different because of a different application so it's now the width of the page don't worry about that we're going to edit it anyway do it again. Notice all of the ways of editing your type is at the top in Photoshop. You may have an older version of Photoshop where that's different, but that's the way it is in the contemporary one. So now I have layers in all these different layers I need to rasterize. So I'm going rasterize type because this is a type layer and it doesn't let me do as much when it's stuck as a type layer. I can use the marquee selection to grab this. And what I like to do is I like to cut and then paste you'll see why for a couple reasons. It gave me a new layer, so I can manipulate as an individual layer. I can also hit paste special paste in place, which should be shift command V if you want to use hotkeys. And I'm going to delete the ones that I don't want, making sure that I'm on the right layer. If I'm on the wrong layer, I'm not actually selecting anything. Yeah, see there's a new layer. Every time you cut and paste, it creates a new layer with just your selection. And I like that because then I can select the individual layers and move them around. This is a little bit clunkier than Illustrator, so if you're looking for my preference, I would prefer Illustrator. And I'm just deleting all of those because I don't need them. I'm cutting, pasting, and now I have individual layers for each letter that I can move around. I need to transform it or rotate it the way I did in Illustrator, and that I need to go to Free Transform, which is also Command T. And I'm just turning to a random angle. Obviously, it shows you precise angles if you want to be more precise. And there's my pile. All right, and I'm deleting some of those excess layers. I had an extra layer because just how it worked. You can merge all layers, merge all visible layers. I just think that's easier because then you can move everything as one group. But don't hit flatten because that would merge it with the background layer. So you can see that the letter layers and the background layer are distinct. And same thing, make sure you're on the right printer. So now you have it printed out, we are going to make a stencil. And we need to protect this stencil because we're going to apply water media to it. I'm just gonna use packing tape. There's probably a lot of better ways to do this. I'm thinking of what is the most accessible way that you could do this with very limited resources. If you have contact tape or a shelf liner, that works better. So I obviously have overextended the packing tape. And so I used a 
uh, utility knife to cut off the excess. I'm flipping it over and I'm also gonna apply packing tape to the back. That's important because again, you're using water media. If it gets on the back as well as the front, the paper will curl and you're gonna be able to use this stencil for more than a couple times and you wanna be able to make a couple of homemade prints out of this. So now we need to cut out the letters. We're gonna cut out everything that is black and be careful when you're cutting you always want to cut away from your hand holding and rotating the paper as you need to for something like the p i have to rotate as i'm cutting to give myself the most control now notice what i did here i'd like to pretend i did this on purpose to show you but i actually did it on accident counter spaces in type like p's D's, A's, anything that has a, a sort of hole in it for any stencil it is going to fall out as you saw i cut and the whole thing fell out so i'm cutting the white space of that counter space out, putting it back into place, and then putting a new piece of tape on top. And that tape's gonna give kind of a bridge. When people talk about stencils, they often call these floating bits islands, and the general rule is no islands, or if you have an island, you need a bridge. I'm just kind of scoring that tape I just laid down so that little piece of tape has a very narrow bridge that just holds the white piece in place. So I'm taking out the dark part of the P and putting another piece of tape on the back to reinforce that bridge because it is very thin. So I need to make sure that it is reinforced and thick enough that it doesn't just fall away. Now, the reason I chose Gil Sands is not just because it mirrors the wood type that we have at Austin P, but it's also a lot easier to carve. So the P had a lot of curves in it, but that's really the only letter that has any curves in it that I have to be concerned with. The I, the L, the E, they're just a bunch of straight lines. So if you notice, I'm using more of my forearm muscle. I'm not using my wrist muscles to try and get straight cuts, uh, holding the paper in place while I do it. So I recommend a sand serif or maybe a slab serif, a very bulky, dense type. Anything with a lot of decorations can be much more complicated to carve. And I want you to pay more attention to the negative space. Okay, so for printing, we need a water-based media ink. I'm using screen print ink, the Jacquard screen print ink. That's what I have. You need something to dab it with. This is a brush, basically two brushes together. This is a sponge. Um, that's gonna be my favorite tool in a second. So I also need to figure out where it's gonna go. What I've done is I've made an outline on the back of my stencil to figure out where the paper should line up because if I'm just guessing, the paper will end up anywhere. I also wanna tape it in place because I don't want to wiggle around while I'm doing this. So I have a little bit of water because I need to loosen up that screen print ink and you'll see I use too much water. Some of you who are familiar with pouchoir or stenciling, you can see right away that this is gonna be a disaster. But any water-based media will work. I recommend gouache, watered down acrylic paint would work fine, watercolor works fine, but just something that's water-based. I'm using the sponge to try and clean it up, but you'll find out that it didn't really matter. You can see from the back that there's sort of a disaster coming. Yeah, there it is. It's kind of a cool aesthetic, but that's gonna be hard to reproduce. So I would recommend just starting over throwing that away. What I'm doing is I'm dabbing now with the sponge, skipping the brush all together. I'm trying to do a light layer just to start just dabbing a little bit in there and then passing over again and notice I'm making the letters a little bit darker. You get a little more control, you hold a harder edge if you do it in two passes instead of trying to do it all at once. Maybe three or four passes. And that looks a lot better. It doesn't have a lot of goo, but there is a little bit of this like kind of residue and that's because I didn't clean the underside of the stencil between the two prints. So definitely do that. So here's a third and final print where I have cleaned the back of it. So it should be my best one. And it should at least show you two that look identical or more or less identical. You're doing this by hand. So there's going to be some variation. The hope is that you get these as close to being similar as you can. There you go. So we can compare them side by side. They're pretty close. The paper is registered more or less the same. They're pretty close except for that small amount of stuff that was on the back. So try this out, especially if you can't go to the studio. Hope it helps.